Okay, so we are going to do adding and subtracting fractions. I'm going to try to be very, very quick with this. Uh, some of these will have to take a little bit more time, but uh, let's take the first one. When you add, first of all, whenever you add fractions, you always want to make sure that you have a common denominator. So in this case, we have two. So I typically rewrite the problem all over the common denominator of two. So I have three plus one. So if I add the top, the numerator, I get 4 over 2. Then you must simplify. And I'll show you how to do this on the calculator later. Okay, what about subtracting? Same thing. Now, in this case, though, we have a mixed number. So you've got to change the mixed number to an improper fraction. So just to review real quick, you have to multiply and then add. Okay, so what happens here... Again, this is all over 6 because we have a common denominator. So right here you get 6 times 1 is 6 plus 5 would be 11. So I get 11 over 6 minus 5 over 6. 11 minus 5 is 6 over 6, and that simplifies to 1. Okay, what about when the denominators are not the same? Well, there's an easy way to do this. Uh, the best thing to do is to look for what is known as the LCM, least common multiple, or on your calculator it's going to be least common uh, divisor or denominator as uh, some people say. But anyway, what we're going to look for here is something that both 7 and 4 will go into. Now, in this particular case, the easy methodology of doing this would be to take whatever number is here and multiply the bottom and the top of this fraction by that. Then take whatever the denominator is here and multiply the second fraction on the top and bottom by that. And the reason we do that is because if we look right here, this becomes 4 times 7. That becomes 4 times 7. So they become common denominators. So I'm going to rewrite this now. So I do 4 times 3 would be 12 over. That now becomes 28. Plus, I do the same thing here, 5 times 7 is 35 over 28. Now I have a common denominator on both sides, so now I'm back to the top up here, just what I did in this problem here. Since I have a common denominator, I write it all over the one denominator, so I do 12 plus 35. When I do that, I get 47 over 28. Again, you want to simplify, and that would be an acceptable answer to me. But you may also need to change it to a mixed number. So you ask yourself, how many times does 28 go into 47? It goes one time with 19 left over. So we get 19 over 28. So either one of these. And I'll show you again on the calculator later how, how to do these. Okay, number four. So still continuing the same thing. We have a difference. Here we have a common denominator already of two. So that becomes 3 minus 3 over 2, and that's 0 over 2. Now, if you can't remember uh, whether or not this works or not, you can type it in on the calculator. But this does work. You can divide into 0. You just cannot divide by 0. And so there we get 0 as our solution. All right. Uh, and I shouldn't say solution. I should say simplified answer. Uh, you can't get a solution unless it's an equation, and these are not. Okay, the next one is a sum, but they're both negative. So now we have to remember our rules for integers. They have the same sign. We add and keep the sign. But again, I'm going to have to change this first mixed number to an improper. So when I do that, I'm going to rewrite here. So this is over 5. So I do 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 plus 4 is negative 14. Now what happens, sometimes students treat this negative. Really, what you should do is kind of ignore this and then just do 5 times 2 is 10, plus 4 is 14, and then put the negative sign on it. So I have negative 14 over 5 here. And then your second one, you can just move this negative sign up here, and we'll talk about that in class as well a little bit, but that's 5 or negative 9 over 5, since I have a common denominator, I get 5 and I have negative 14 plus negative 9 
you remember your rules, and you get negative 23 over 5. If you change it to a mixed number, 5 goes into 23 four times. That would be 20, which leaves a remainder of 3. So that would be the mixed number answer. So again, we'll talk more about that in class. Uh, just real quickly, when you're talking about a number like this, negative 9 fifths, and that's how most books write it, but you can rewrite that as negative 9 over 5 because that's still negative 9 fifths, or you can rewrite it as 9 over negative 5. All of those are equivalent values. Okay, the next one is find the difference. Go back to your rule for integers when you have two negative signs, so like right here. We said do change, change. So then I have to get a common denominator. So we said earlier, multiply this one by 3 on the top and bottom. We're going to multiply this one by 4 on the top and bottom. When we do that, we now get 9 over 12 plus 16 over 12. Now I have a common denominator of 12. So now I can rewrite all over one denominator. 9 plus 16, and that would be 25 over 12. And then again, if you have to change it to a mixed number, 12 goes into 25 two times with a remainder of 1. So again, either of those would be acceptable. Okay, now the last couple here, 7 and 8. Uh, number 7, again, different denominators. First thing we need to do is change our mixed number, so we multiply and then add. So that now becomes 6 times 3 is 18, 18 plus 5 is 23, so negative 23 over 6, again the negative right there, plus, and then this one is negative 3 fifths, so I'm going to put my negative sign on the top, get a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply this one by 5 on the top and bottom. I'm going to multiply the second one by 6 on the top and bottom. So now that's going to give me a common denominator. So now I have 30. Top 5 times negative 23 would be a negative 115. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Since I have a common denominator now of 30, I can combine those. Negative 115 plus negative 18. If I do that, I get negative 133 over 30. So again, if you're going to simplify to a mixed number, 30 goes into negative 133. Uh, I believe it's four times. That'd be 120, so that gives you a remainder of 13 over 30. All right, last example. So again, we have unlike denominators. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction top and bottom by 3. I'm going to multiply the second fraction, top and bottom by 5. Also, I'm going to do this plus a negative, and we'll talk more about that with integers, uh, about how we don't really have subtraction, we only have adding the opposite. So then I rewrite each, 3 times 3 is 9 over 15 plus Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10 over 15. Now I have a common denominator of 15. So I have 9 plus negative 10. If I combine 9 and negative 10, that gives me negative 1 over 15. And then that one cannot be simplified anymore. So that's just a real quick review and notes over adding and subtracting fractions.